Being seven feet of pure muscle and strength, Valuev was a man that inspired fear. He's really, really big, he's really strong. He's never been knocked down, never been knocked out in 51 fights. He is a huge man. He's got arms like tree trunks. His, his legs are like forests. Opponents that got in the ring with him looked like babies, intimidated and scared. He's ugly as hell. He's probably one of the ugliest human beings. He is the ugliest human being I've ever seen in the flesh. Today, we will take you through the life of this giant and how he dominated the boxing world using his towering size. Here he is, the biggest heavyweight champion in history. Valuev was born on the 21st of August 1973 in Leningrad, Russia, SFSR, Soviet Union, now St. Petersburg, Russia. He is of ethnic Russian descent, but he also had a Tatar grandfather. Although his own parents are short, both 1.67 meters or 5.5 feet tall, his Tatar great-grandfather has been described as of mountainous proportions and a warrior giant of Russian folklore. His own size and appearance are due to gigantism complicated by acromegaly. At age 20, Nikolai Valuev took up boxing. After having his first professional match against American boxer John Morton in Berlin, Germany on October 15, 1993, and winning it, he turned amateur as that match was not initially considered as a professional contest, trained under his future manager and promoter Oleg Shaleev. He won two silver medals at amateur championships in St. Petersburg and Russia. He participated in the 1994 Goodwill Games as part of the Russian contingent, but was disqualified after his match against Morton was recognized by an international commission as a professional bout. By the time he turned professional, he had won all his 23 amateur fights, 16 of which were by knockout. Between 1994 and 1996, he fought and won against five relatively weak opponents. From 1997 onwards, the competition became steep. On September 27, 1997, he defeated kickboxing legend Kevin Rosier with a brutal first-round knockout. His first significant match came about on January 22, 1999, against Alexei Osokin for the Russian heavyweight title. Dominating his opponent throughout the bout, he knocked Osokin out in the sixth round. What is a knockdown? Eleven months later, he successfully defended his Russian heavyweight title against Alexei Varakin. On June 6, 2000, he grabbed his first international championship, the vacant PABA interim heavyweight title, after registering a comfortable win against Ukrainian Yuri Yelostradov. Valuev would go on to win the vacant PABA heavyweight title against George Terminator Lindberger on June 30, 2001. On July 24, 2004, after a six-round war against Nigerian Richard Igbenegu, he won via technical knockout and was subsequently hailed as the new WBA Intercontinental Interim Heavyweight Champion. Within three months, he registered a win against Italian Paolo Vidos to become the new WBA Intercontinental Heavyweight Champion. In the same year, he signed a contract with German promoter Wilfred Sauerland and his American colleague Don King. Valuev made history when he defeated American John Ruiz in Max Schmeling Hall, Berlin, Germany on December 17, 2005 and won the WBA Heavyweight Championship. He was the first Russian ever to claim the most prestigious title in the heavyweight category in professional boxing. On June 3, 2006, Nikolai Valuev defended the WBA heavyweight title for the first time, having weighed in nearly 80 pounds heavier than his opponent, American Owen Beck. Valuev powered his way to a quick win in Hanover, Germany. After being floored in the previous round, Beck was knocked down for a second time in the third. While he managed to beat the count to continue, referee Luis Pabon soon had to step in and stop the punishment. With the victory, Valuev moved to 43 and 0. The Kampfentscheidung in Hannover. He was making waves in the division, and not just because he was 7 feet tall. Someone of such size and stature was a rarity in the ring. Heavyweights were big men, of course, but not that big. 
But after the initial shock value, it turned out Valuev was not that much fun to watch. For starters, he was not going to have a career in modeling after he finished in the ring. He had a furrowed brow, even when he wasn't trying to look tough. Even his smile seemed a little menacing, as if they were something he would do right before he inflicted pain. While he had a shaven head, the Russian giant, not the most imaginative of nicknames it has to be said, was so quick to remove the hair that covered his upper body, it was thick enough to be plated. The jab was his weapon of choice, understandably so considering he had a reach of 85 inches. He could work from a distance knowing that his opponents could do little to counter, considering they couldn't get close enough to land a punch. There was an improvement over time in his skills. Having lost his title initially to Ruslan Chagayev in 2007, Valuev met Ruiz again the following year for the vacant strap. He dominated to become a two-time world champion. He faced a 46-year-old Evander Holyfield in Zurich, Switzerland on December 20th, 2008. Valuev triumphed over his opponent after a complete 12-round match, winning via majority decision. Although many considered the final scorecard to be controversial, Valuev's title defense against British boxer David Hay was quite controversial as well. In the days leading up to the fight, Hay constantly mocked him for his gigantism and fighting style. He's ugly as hell, he's probably one of the ugliest human beings, he is the ugliest human being I've ever seen in the flesh. You see these horror movies and you think, oh, no one can look like that. No, this guy truly does. You'd never guess David likes to wind up his opponents, and today was an opportunity to do just that, with the aid of an actor and a Halloween mask. The bout itself took place on November 7, 2009 in Germany, and lasted a full 12 round, with Hay emerging as the victor. What if David Hay had landed his best shot in Valuev's chin? That was like a cuffing shot with the wrist part of the glove. Oh, look at this, from Hay. From London, England, the no. David Hay is the WBA heavyweight champion of the world. Three days after the match, Valuev announced his retirement. He is one of the very few boxers to have retired without a stoppage loss on their record. And just like that, the giant disappeared from the sport. Nearly a year after losing to Hay, it was revealed a bone problem would keep him out of the action for a considerable period of time. In 2010, he underwent two major orthopedic surgeries to treat his severe bone and joint problems. Klitschko Brothers offered him a $2.5 million contract for a title match, which he declined due to the aforementioned health issues. Vitaly Klitschko did try to tempt Valuev to make a return to the ring but eventually admitted defeat in 2012. Just like the eldest Klitschko brother, Valuev swapped throwing punches for a career in politics. He became a member of the United Russian Party. It didn't take him long to make a big impression. According to RT.com, he had to have a special chair made for him in the parliament's lower chamber. That was the thing about Valuev. While his body was built to dominate, his brain wasn't wired in the same way. He wrote poetry and was an avid reader. It almost looked at times like he was a reluctant fighter, as if his size and stature meant it was the best route to take. He was active as a youngster, yet basketball, not boxing, was his sport of choice. You have a person born with such a physique once in a hundred years, such a build and such an intellect, Russia may not get another such man in our lifetime. Valuev was certainly a one of a kind, a giant who didn't want to stand out. Make sure to check out our other videos if you enjoyed this one. Until next time.